Today we travel together with the Voyager probes to a place where no human has ever been. More than 12 billion miles away, the probes explore the end of the solar system and interstellar space, a mysterious, infinite expanse of darkness. We clarify the questions why an unexpected particle stream set scientists on Earth into turmoil and what is hidden behind this strange noise in reality. Voyager, on the way into infinite widths. In 1977, the twin Voyager probes launched into space just weeks apart on a historic mission. In 1989, and only five days after the 12th anniversary of their launch, Voyager 2 became the first and so far only space probe to reach the planet Neptune. Here, in almost total darkness, Voyager 2 snapped the first real images of the brilliant blue planet. Never before have humans seen Neptune so close and so clearly. Neptune becomes blue because of large amounts of the gas methane in its atmosphere. Methane absorbs the light that is sparse in these regions. The red color spectrum is completely swallowed by methane, while blue light is scattered in this fascinating way, giving the planet its unique appearance. At 2.7 billion miles from the Sun, Voyager 2's mission was effectively over, but the probe kept on flying. At a speed of 33,995 miles per hour, Voyager 2 moved further and further through space and straight toward the end of the solar system. Since the last pictures of Neptune, nearly 20 years should pass until Voyager 2 provided again for headlines. Voyager 2 was the first human-made object to cross the until then completely unexplored border between our solar system and interstellar space. No sooner had the first data arrived on Earth than the scientists had to accept a bitter disappointment. Venturing into uncharted scientific territory. More than 12 billion miles from Earth and more than 200 times the distance between Earth and the Sun, the Voyager probes plunged into the heliopause and the shock zone at the end of the Sun's catchment area. Although Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 left home at about the same time, they entered interstellar space in completely different areas and flight paths. Voyager 1 took a shortcut immediately after launch, flying through the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter in a risky move. It's nothing short of a miracle that the two probes are still functional after four decades and regularly radio new data back to Earth for analysis. NASA jokingly calls the probes flying tape recorders. When you consider today's probes, which are equipped with high-tech cameras, sensors, and solar sails. The design of the Voyager probes seems truly simple. However, the secret of the Voyager probe's longevity most likely lies in this very simplicity and in their power source. Solar modules would have been unthinkable for this mission. On their course, light becomes increasingly sparse, and in interstellar space, it will eventually disappear altogether for millennia. The probes get power from three radioactive isotope generators that contain enough plutonium to power both probes for several hundred years. Even if they run out of juice, the interstellar medium will carry them on and on. No one could have said for sure in the 1970s that the two would even reach the end of the solar system, although the hope was there from the beginning. In several thousand years, Voyager 1 and 2 will then reach the nearest star systems as the first interstellar ambassadors. And who knows, perhaps in many more thousands of years, they will be sighted and captured by some extraterrestrial civilization. For this scenario, the probes have a greeting message of Earthlings with them. On two golden disks, basic information about our species, the Earth, our sciences, environmental sounds, and pieces of music can be heard. So that extraterrestrials can also play the message Clever minds have included an instruction manual in easy-to-understand picture language. The idea of an alien civilization thousands of light years away from us, discovering these disks and exploring the messages from Earth is both funny and fascinating. But back to the mystery of the heliopause and the discovery that has scientists so up in arms. The End of the Heliosphere Our star, the Sun, is constantly flinging large amounts of charged particles from itself, over which the solar magnetic fields waft through space. 
The solar wind streaks in all directions away from the sun, forming a balloon around the solar system. Scientists refer to this balloon as the heliosphere. Initially, the propagation of the particles is as fast as sound. Then, the pressure of interstellar matter slows the expansion. This creates what is called a boundary shock wave, which is considered the first boundary to interstellar space. This is followed by a zone where the slower particles and magnetic fields mix with those of the interstellar medium. The final boundary to interstellar space, where no more influence of solar particles can be seen, is called the heliopause. Before the arrival of the Voyager probes, estimates of the distance to there varied dramatically. Scientists could only guess, and still every researcher hoped to have been right somehow. But the scientists were disappointed. The heliosphere turned out to be much larger and the influences of the sun more far-reaching than all scientists had predicted. Voyager 2 provided even more surprises. When it entered the interstellar medium a few years after its twin, it sent exactly the same distance data as Voyager 1 six years earlier. According to calculations, however, extreme solar winds should have expanded the heliosphere significantly. That this was apparently not the case showed that the balloon of particles, plasma, and magnetic fields formed by our Sun is far more stable than previously thought. No one had previously even known how the data would change when Voyager 1 and 2 entered interstellar space. In 2012, Voyager 1 was the first to show striking data. The solar wind disappeared and a significant increase in particle density indicated that the boundary with interstellar space had been reached. Right at the boundary, the particles are once again significantly compressed by the pressure of the interstellar medium before they dramatically decrease. Voyager 2 sent the same signs six years later. Both spacecraft crossed the threshold into interstellar space about 120 astronomical units from the Sun. After, their next adventure was, and will be for the next thousands or millions of years, interstellar space. First, the two surprised scientists again by making unusual measurements. There is apparently a weak yet measurable magnetic field permeating the space between stars. Voyager 2 measured an interstellar magnetic field of about 7 microgauss. By comparison, this is 64,000 times weaker than the magnetic field of Earth's magnetosphere. Nevertheless, this means the magnetic forces are about twice as strong as astronomers had originally predicted. The intensity of the interstellar magnetic field finally explained why the boundary of the heliosphere was so stable. Voyager 2 made other unexpected discoveries. In 2022, the spacecraft's Plasma Wave Science Instrument indicated that the density of the interstellar medium increases as it moves farther from the Sun. By the time the probe had traveled about 20 astronomical units in interstellar space, Voyager 2 recorded a more than twofold increase in particle density. This density gradient was completely unexpected and cannot be explained up until today. One theory says that the interstellar particles slow down and accumulate as soon as they flow towards the heliopause. Another theory is that where the interstellar magnetic field collides with the Sun's heliosphere, the magnetic field lines undergo compression, pushing ionized particles away and creating a relatively empty region between the heliopause and the rest of the interstellar medium. In any case, what is certain from these discoveries is that the Sun's sphere of influence extends much further into interstellar space than previously thought. Of course, the scientists of these exciting and completely new discoveries hope that the Voyager probes will continue to send more measurement data for some time. But the power supply is running low. The measurement instruments cost both probes the largest amounts of energy. In the course of the mission, more and more instruments were switched off to reduce power consumption to a minimum. Currently, only radiation detectors, the plasma spectrometers, the magnetometer, and the particle measuring instruments are still active. When the contact to the probes will completely break off is still open at the moment. However, scientists currently hold out little hope that radio contact will last beyond the end of the decade. Both probes are now so far from Earth that a radio signal from Voyager 2 takes just under 18 hours to reach us. 
For Voyager 1, the radio transmission takes a full 22 hours. The data is received via NASA's Deep Space Network. Only these three antenna complexes distributed over the entire globe are able to capture the signals from these distances. The greater the distance, the weaker the signals become, and the more difficult it is for us to catch them. Mysterious Sound of the Universe In 2021, another interesting incident occurred that no one had expected. From the actually silent interstellar medium, a low buzzing sound penetrated Voyager's measuring probes. Due to the thin plasma of space, sound waves can only be transported in a very limited way. You can imagine that the interstellar medium consists of only a few particles per cubic centimeter. Sound waves are transmitted, but much weaker, slower, and still more constant than is the case within the heliosphere. Shortly after Voyager 1 passed the heliopause, the spacecraft registered a series of relatively loud, high-frequency whistling sounds. These sounds, which were associated with sudden bursts of activity on the sun, propagated like a shock wave. They lasted only a short time and then faded away. Upon closer examination of the sounds, the buzzing sound then stood out. Audible to human ears, the quote-unquote whisper of space became audible only when scientists raised the frequencies. The team at Cornell University that succeeded in isolating the buzzing of space explained that Voyager 1's plasma wave science antennas had succeeded in recording it. The long-lasting continuous hum was in the 3 kilohertz range. Amazingly, the sound resembled a single constant note. This is a phenomenon that does not exist on Earth. Pure tones can only be produced by computers. All other sound events are always made up of changing frequencies and sounds because they are altered by particles in the atmosphere and by hearing. Sound is created by an initial moment, then spreads out, changing in the process. Initially, Sounds are usually larger and more intense, and as they travel through the air, they decrease in intensity. The buzzing of space is continuous, as if it had no beginning and no end. It is interesting to note that this sound was apparently known on Earth thousands of years ago. The Vedas describe the sound of space as sound without beginning and end, or eternal sound. What do you think? Did the Voyager probes possibly capture the sound of God?